If you could go back and tell that 28 year old version of yourself something about relationships or about marriage what would you tell that 28 year old version It's not just the wedding right a lot of people when they say i i want to get married I, i'm looking to settle down are always thinking of just the wedding like it's, it's like it's in the movies you know it's wedding end of movie happily ever after and uh, but what marriage is is definitely companionship there is someone with you to witness your every days every little thing that happens in your day it shouldn't go unnoticed someone should witness it it can be something as silly as what did you eat for lunch i sprained my toe today you're a very calm guy dude i'm someone who's diagnosed with adhd so i have intrusive thoughts oh, really? sometimes when i'm doing a podcast with people i visualize a train coming and running both of us over and all so <laughs> <laughs> that's the curse of mind which is why all these random questions are being thrown at wow, you wow okay but i mean I, i've i think um, experienced that once or twice it's like what you're sitting around you randomly like i think when i was promoting like yesterday i i told this to other she was sitting next to me what would it be like if i just like killed over and collapsed <laughs> like now or like or suddenly like i threw up or something would well, that be really weird <laughs> okay so after the thing so i'm looking at this like others do you get these kind of thoughts he's like no bro that's all you <laughs> <laughs> it's tulkar salman on trs i'm not going to make this intro very long because i know a lot of you are his fans and y'all are just watching trs to know more about his mind but as with any of our film oriented episodes we've completely unlocked both his mind and his heart we've also gotten to his soul so you're going to enjoy this conversation i encourage you to make as many reels and shorts as is possible feel free to use the content all i'll say is that this was a very friendly easy going conversation between two media bros enjoy yourselves is tulkar salman on t r s DQ brother <laughs> Dulkar Salman bhai I don't feel how are you bro I'm very well such a calm classy vibe you have dude <laughs> thank you yeah a uh, burning question for you man sure how do you have such beautiful hair <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad it's still there <laughs> <laughs> dude it's gorgeous hai. that's the first thing i noticed about you when i saw you ever like for the first time in life yeah. i was like this guy has <laughs> damn and i still haven't done a hair commercial <laughs> no no one no, none of those products yet i'm like i should be doing this <laughs> a lot of guys are age are struggling I, with a lot of image related i know issues. my classmates uh, yeah. and they all look at me as like you have such good hair <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like they're like willing it to go away or something <laughs> yeah i mean there is a concept called nazar that probably really exists man yeah yeah i'm sure it's there as in uh, definitely when i mean you know we, we definitely all believe in it when uh, everything is going right you know there's a little fear of when is that one thing going to go wrong Uh, yeah? yeah yeah i think that's there it's a cultural thing probably even a guy as positive as you thinks about what could go wrong i'm an overthinker big time really yeah yeah i mean i i, I believe in energies in the sense uh, i always try to stay positive I, i don't i learned quite early in life to cut off negative people uh, i think the first time i did that with, with with a friend it was like one big uh, eye opening moment for me i was like i'm fine like i i can make more friends he can make more friends maybe we just don't connect Uh, so all of these like little learnings you know when you as you like navigate through life we've had some crazy actors on the show uh, and like i think the best ones i can't remember who said this on the show uh who was it who had said that you need to travel the world to actually be a good actor or you need to have life experiences heavily pankaj sapati pankaj sapati said this on the show yeah and uh, there was a very different energy about him mm-hmm. and i don't know i like, see somewhat of a younger parallel in you dude oh really yeah very <laughs> like observant i love him like i i i'm such a fan of him and he has a very calming energy so do you like even on screen i'm saying yeah do yeah. you so do Maybe. you <laughs> <laughs> i mean i i don't really look at myself in third person Maybe. i'm telling you thank you thank one you. of my research bits that came out is brother massive female fan following <laughs> massive <laughs> female fan following in kerala girls love dk <laughs> No, I think it's also the, you know, when you start out, you kind of that romantic genre is is the space where most of us actors find our footing, uh, and then as you get older, then you become more action or whatever. Like you, I feel like most actors have this journey. Why? I don't know. I think uh, uh, at a certain age, you know, those stories just come to you. You know, you you are the lover boy, or like, oh, I had a lot of this finding myself films, uh, a good bunch of them. Uh, then it switched to. 
uh, romance i guess that may be resonated with people or connected uh, and that tag is stuck and i'm like now i just don't fought and i'm like this next decade i can't be a romantic hero uh, so i'm like i need to break out of that uh, so right now i'm in, i'm sort of in that transition phase where i'm switching over to different genres nice yeah how are you looking the way you do at 40 I still have grace. Are you, that, <laughs> it adds to it. So day one, you know, they did mascara. And, and whenever I'm like in interviews, I'm always like playing with it. And at the end of it, my hands are black. I'm like, just forget it. Leave it. I'm, it's okay. It's just some grace. But I, I'm enjoying it. I think, you know, I'd rather be here uh, than in that sort of um, uh, not knowing in my 20s as to what or where I'll end up. Yeah. yeah. One thing which has been a recent learning for me and it's such a cliched learning in life, but I had to learn it again. Yeah. Someone I was dating was an amazing person, great relationship, but I just felt like she was very sad on the inside because of her own past. Hmm. But she would really like cling on to that sadness. So music choices were sad. <laughs> conversations were sad everything was about pain and sadness right and i'm a normal happy dude <laughs> but i find myself thinking about my own traumas a lot more <laughs> was it bringing you down unknowingly yeah, yeah and, i think that happened and then later on i after we broke up i met my old friends i like i started seeing other people and i realized the world is a much happier place <laughs> than my last few months were yeah uh, and that made me understand that happiness is one of those things where you get to set the ceiling yeah. so in every moment you get to decide that no i want to be even happier and start finding joy in like small things right. start finding joy in like large things really celebrate happiness and when you do that on a regular basis you actually become happier yeah yeah i agree the reason i'm saying this is because you're a very happy guy <laughs> <laughs> i feel that vibe a lot from thank you. you thank you i think i think it's important right? you should enjoy life i think uh, i love what i do I think the only major conflict I'm going through now is being away from home. Uh, I have a daughter who is six and that's been magical. And you don't want to miss it. It's your need. It's not their need as much as your need to like be there for the big moments and, and see all of that, you know. Uh, so I'm very jealous of uh, the other dads at school who, who are able to go pick them up every day and uh, who are constantly present. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm on FaceTime and all of this stuff, but like you want to be there, you want to be tactile. Uh, yeah. That's the only conflict. But your daughter gets to say, my dad is sexiest. <laughs> <And then laughs> Most none, of, <laughs> none of the other kids can compete. Yeah, I, I think she does. She does find a lot of excitement in in see, I mean, when I get recognized or people come f- for photos and stuff. There's a little delight in her face. How old is she? She's six. Yeah. Yeah. How have the six years of her life changed your life? Fully, I think. I think you know, uh, I was. It's something I read somewhere when when a child is born. So are the parents, right? Like you, you also become a father for the first time. You're born as a father or born as a mother in that moment. So it is life changing. It is. Um, and, you know, till then you think, you know, uh, what love is, uh, what you feel for your mother, what you feel for your father uh, or your wife or your friends. But trust me, there is nothing like when you have a child, as in the love you feel for that child is it's like it, it'll be like that. You've never had that feeling in your life. And I'm like, okay, this is what love is. More than wife. More than anything. Like, I mean, I'm sure she feels the same way. Like, what you feel for your baby is like, and, and this is why our parents have been the way they are with us, you know, uh, in worrying all the time or, uh, and also always forgiving, you know, no matter what, you can do the worst thing and your parents will find a way to forgive you because you're, you're, you're a part of them. What should I know about my 30s? Because a lot of my friends... It's either everyone's afraid about like all these aging, right. wa- weight gain, hair loss, or people are afraid about life and fatherhood. Or there's not too many people afraid about career, fortunately, in my circles. But See, usually usually I feel like that is the big concern. Fatherhood. You know? No, like career and money and all that. Like I feel like once you can remove that factor out of your life, so many of the, uh, these other issues are very essentially first world issues, right? Like there's... Especially in India, you look around you and all of these people probably don't enjoy all of these other things because money is such a big factor or a job is such a big factor or like they're in a, a rut, you know, constantly doing the same thing and un- unhappy about that. And that unhappiness, you know, then spills over into your family or how you're with your kids or your wife or whatever. So I'm like, if you guys have this stuff sorted, the rest is is not is not something to worry about. I mean, if you lose hair, you can get a transplant. Uh, if you gain weight, you can you can train or diet. You know, love 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 the honesty. Yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I, I feel like that. These are things. I don't think 
earlier generations worried about these things image no they weren't worried about those things like like how i look if i'm fat or if i'm if i'm losing hair or they had such i think uh, india wasn't such a big economy at that time so much of this was making ends meet or whatever you know uh, ambition of building your house uh, getting your your daughter married these were the big worries that they had and i feel like our generation doesn't really have that you know we have so many more avenues to to make a living or to earn and also uh, uh we earn so much more comparatively you know like maybe today what i'm being because business has changed so much what i'm being paid at my age as an actor vis-a-vis what maybe my father was making at that time in india is worlds apart I I say this with a lot of respect because I've grown up in a cosmopolitan city. Right. Okay, bro. So it's it's not coming from a wrong place. Yeah. But what I will say is I've always noticed that all my friends from the five southern states all right. can pick up languages like very easily. But you know, I think I think it's an Indian thing. I, th- I think the average Indian knows two three languages. Two two three still you guys know like seven eight and all, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we'll know as in uh, uh, typically uh, Malayali will, will definitely find Tamil easy. and they will have some bangalore exposure because of college or something and they will pick up a bit of kannada uh and then hindi we have either in school or something so yeah three four languages you're right you're chill with hindi like fully it was my second language uh and then at the time i spent in in college uh, all of us indians from so many different states if we had to bitch about any any foreigners or <laughs> anything the common language is hindi <laughs> so yeah. we're on the on the bus you know and you want to pass comments well, like, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on. so that's easier right so then it became the common language so i think a lot of the times uh you know w- what we're conscious of uh, in speaking hindi or any language is, is you worried about an accent or you worried about your diction or all of these things but when it becomes just a means of communication and you just have to communicate something or when i lived in bombay and if i had to speak to uh, the, the auto driver or whoever I don't care about how I'm sounding, you know. So I think when you keep doing that you lose that fear and then it gets better and then I think uh, your grasp on the language also gets better because a lot of the times it's you holding back um out of fear of judgment or ridicule or something. Uh but as you keep doing it and then and then you start to develop a ear for the rest of okay this is where the accent is coming or this is where I sound uh, like a non uh, Hindi speaker. Uh, so these are things I keep picking up. Could I say something brutal, dude? Not <laughs> brutal for you. It's nice for you. It's just a brutal statement in general. Go for it. I feel the Hindi film industry needs more dudes like you. <laughs> Sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what to make of it. As in, you know, I also feel like um, it is a very big industry. This one, like Hindi, is huge in the sense the reach is so much more, uh, so much more eyeballs on this. uh and i think bombay just being this it's such a center of uh everything like cinema industry finance and so i feel like there's so much happening here all the time there's so many events you know actors don't just end up going for film events uh so i feel like i i do feel like it's very different here so maybe um uh, how they have to navigate this is quite different from maybe what how we do it back down south Have you avoided all these things like parties, alcohol, all all these things because of the inner good boy that you are? <laughs> you seem like a good boy. No, I'm I'm social enough. Uh, I do my time in Chennai. Like you know, it's it was always different. Because Chennai was a, like, again a cosmopolitan city coming from Kochi and stuff. So like definitely, we had a great social life and school kids love to like go out all the time. And but now I don't get the time as much because I'm never in one place. Uh, but I but I do love meeting new people. Okay. Uh, it's because I'm. There's always something to learn. There's always something. I feel like I'm a sum of all the people I've met. Possibly it helps you as an actor also. Maybe yeah. I yes. mean I'm not I'm not constantly observing their mannerisms or their way of speaking. I think I'm always seeking knowledge from people. Uh, I think my choice in or my knowledge of uh, music or the arts or any of these things I, I have all come from. um you know friends of mine or going to the houses seeing their parents book collection or their art collection because every house is different you know so i i strongly believe that and i think um people have known have introduced me to different cuisines or got me into food uh so even as of now even even i think if i'm doing a new film project and i meet somebody new there's this gentleman called um, sachin I forget his last name 
uh, on Guns and Gulabs. He plays Mr. This is my sort of sidekick, uh, Ram Prasad ji, and his son is this little MMA champ. Little MMA. As in, he's tiny. He's like twelve, thirteen, or something like that. They have and MMA for kids. Yeah, in Delhi apparently, and he's kind of, you know, uh, fighting above his age group and all that, and. and he's such an unassuming man this gentleman and so he's showing me videos and he's like <laughs> he's like you know this kid just started seeing this on youtube or something and he loved it and started practicing on his own at home uh and uh, i was like what what do you mean he just taught himself he's like yeah literally he just he just kept practicing and practicing and practicing kept getting good and then finally he found uh, there was a school somewhere and then he you know he asked us to take him there and we took him there and they were already impressed with what he knew and then they were like tweaking his skills Like that's such a fascinating story. Practicing it, you know, himself. and and uh, Sachin sir lives in Bombay. His family is in Delhi, and he's working here. And uh, uh, he is only seeing most of this through his phone, and it's so sweet. And I didn't even know that like there's a uh, you somebody could just pick up MMA from YouTube. But I'm saying this, this like you hear so much from people. Times are different, man. Yeah, you're like out and out a family guy. Like not not a family guy, like <laughs> like a family man. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think my I mean my home atmosphere has always been like that maybe. Okay. And uh, now we're at a stage where we all, uh, as in first the, when when we were younger we'd go travel as boys, and then we all met our wives and then we all became friends together and then became couples traveling together, and now it's like me and all of my friends have little girls. It's like a massive girl gang. There's like. I think six or seven or more girls in in my different friend circles all together. Now they are all friends, and these kids are like they believe their cousins, they believe their siblings. So everybody has one elder sister or younger sister. And Put all those girls in a cage together and get them to do MMA, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I mean, we we are super strong girls. Come on, yeah. But it's great. It's great. Just a thought. Yeah. Get that Sachin sir's so, kid, so, to, kid like, to come and train, train them. them. <laughs> Come on, girls. Need more female MMA fights. I'm missing it out. I wish love upon your children. But why not? Right? Like why not? Yeah, it'd be cool. I mean, I, I, I like my sister has always been influenced by me and my dad and stuff. And like you know, she's into cars or driving and everything because I'm into them. And so it's always cool. I think when when I when I when I see them doing things like that. Tell me about like your whole style vibe, dude. Like one of the most common things that comes up about you when someone googles your name is one of India's most stylish men. <laughs> How do you look at it? How? And and I I agree. It's and style is not just the way you dress or the way you keep your beard. It's all of it put together and the energy right. and then how you let the energy dictate what the world sees on the outside. I think um, I, mean, I, de- I definitely always had an eye for detail uh, from when I was young. Like I notice every little thing. Like I and I like to see effort in anything. Uh, like when I walk into a room, I'm like I love the color of the wall. I'm noticing you know everything on your shelf, and I'm like it speaks so much about you, and you know it shows. Culture and all of this stuff. Does it say that I'm a f***ed up guy? <laughs> no, no, no. It, 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 and it feels lived in. You know, a lot of the times people don't put anything out, and you don't know the house doesn't speak about them. Uh, and I think from when I was young, like low angling my father, you know, and he was always stylish and he was always cool and he was always dressed really well. And so I used to want want to dress like so as a like a freaking toddler or like when from when I could speak and walk, I wanted to dress like a grown up, like. <laughs> my my i think 4 year 5 year old self going to some school fancy dress party i want to wear a suit with nice. a bow tie and all this stuff and But you knew the ladies like all this you know what i think no the ladies okay. i i was just like i want to dress i mean I, i think i was always like a bit of a dandy like i want to like be well oh, turned okay. out but dress like a grown up not like a kid how does a brother become a better dressed man <laughs> No, understand. I mean, I think it's so important for us to understand our bodies. You know, you know what is your strong suit. Like, what is if you have a certain type of shoulder, or if you have a belly, or whatever it is, you dress according to that. You know, let's not highlight the bad sides. You enhance the the good parts, and that's the best thing about clothes. You know, anyone, any body type can be well dressed. Self awareness, yeah. Uh, experimentation, yeah. And Malayali genetics. <laughs> 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 no, but I, you know, we need to understand a bit about how clothes are cut and how they fall on, fit on fit us and fall on us and stuff. And like I see a lot of people sometimes wearing very expensive, uh, big label stuff, but it, just not fitting them right. 
You, you know, mean the vibe is also not right? Yeah, it's off. You know, people are trying to say that. Listen, you see this brand? This yeah, but is how much it, money I'm worth? That's fine. But below that, if if that that <laughs> that, that, that uh, shirt is hugging your belly or something, that means you bought the wrong size. <laughs> okay, fair. I've been relatively fit throughout my twenties. Very fit throughout my twenties. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, you know, I I do feel slightly weaker in some situations. And you know, when you're a kid watching football, and some footballers turn thirty years old, and you're like, ah, now he's old. Now he'll go to another club. Yeah. We are thirty now, dude. And so you and feel, you know, randomly you start seeing aches and pains. Yeah, uh, you're like, this wasn't there before. Uh, why is my knee making this weird sound? Yeah, when I'm climbing downstairs, that wasn't there before. And it happens very suddenly because in my head I'm still sixteen years old. Yeah, but I'm actually thirty. <laughs> How old are you in your head? Probably like something like that. Uh, yeah, my late twenties. Late twenties, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't know. This last ten, twelve years of acting and marriage and and fatherhood <laughs> and all this happened like that. So I must be where I was right before I started. I got into movies. This whole thing about a guy's aging body, I'm seeing it for the first time. My friends also seeing it for the first time. It happens in your late twenties. Suddenly, you start seeing yourself slightly weaker. All that work in the gym doesn't translate to as many results as, easy, yeah, as, as easy, it did yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah like you don't get away with like binging. Like earlier, we'd be like, "Good, I, I can get ripped in a week." Yeah, so it's fine. I can binge today, or this holiday is fine. I'll get back for one week. I'll be back. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a brutal reality for guys, dude. Like you have to learn it very fast. I think it's way worse for women. Yeah, yeah. But, like it's much more intense the way the, I mean, the way society is built. But again, it's not something to bring you down. I mean, like embrace it. You know, uh, there's so much uh, joy, like I said, in the security of having found these other things. You know, so we should embrace that also. Like I, I would not trade this for anything else. Like me being here at forty uh, is so much. Of a happier, secure space than in those twenties where I was. I thought I was going to be a complete failure and a disaster in life, you know. So I'm okay with the aches and pains and the grays and stuff. <laughs> How's thirties health like? Like thirties health was good, uh, but maybe the first time uh, I wore a neck brace <laughs> because <laughs> I used the wrong pillow and my neck got thrown off, and I was like. This never used to happen. <laughs> uh, or the first time I had like a like a knee injury, and I was like, "This is like uh, in my twenties. If I did the same jump for the stunt, uh, could I have taken it? Uh, is it because I was like thirty seven, thirty when that happened? Uh, so yeah, little things. I think you start to um, just become a little more careful about. But self confidence, money. Like my twenties, like you know, I was, I was, I wanted to be this daredevil. I wanted to uh, ride motorcycles everywhere and. Uh, I jumped, jumped off a plane, all that stuff, and today I'm just like, hmm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can be the best rider. Same thing that my parents would tell me: you can be the best rider, but what about the other guys? What about traffic? You know, you start to think, and then you, when you have the responsibility of, of uh, going back home, or like you know, thinking of your of your family or your kids and stuff, automatically you, that the, the daredevil bit kind of takes a backseat. You know? well, okay. So I'm, I'm sure, like all of our fathers were also like this before we came along. Fair. You know, and now they're like the dads and like you know worried about how fast we drive and all this. I get that now. I understand where the, where they were then. But all in all, age forty is much better than age thirty. For me personally, yes. And it's not been the case for people you've seen. No, I don't. Know. I mean, it's it's uh, some people. If everything has always been going great in their lives, and age is the only thing that makes them upset, aging. You uh, look great, dude. <laughs> like, I'm just definitely a lot of fitness. I mean, you know played. what? Like maybe, you know, I, I restore a lot of old cars and stuff. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, maybe I'm I'm going into preventive maintenance <laughs> for the future. <laughs> like keep this head of hair there. You know, what do I do to like? So if I if I if I see someone, I'm like, you know, is there something I can do to make sure like it stays? Like you know, I don't want to add anything. It's fine. I like how it is. Okay. But how do I make this last as long as I can? <laughs> Hey, yeah. We had we had Sunil Shetty on the on the show. Oh, look at him! Yeah, you know. He, and, and I told him straight up, dude, you look even better now than at forty. Absolutely, absolutely. I think you're on the similar path, honestly. I hope so. Okay. I hope so. What's the secret, man? Ah, uh, I mean, just doing what you love, and I I think all of that is maybe just being true, right? True to yourself. Do you meditate or something like? I actually want to try, you know, because of my overthinking. Um, It doesn't come through. Like I've been talking to you for a good yeah. half an hour, forty-five minutes now. I haven't sensed that anything. But you yet. leave me alone somewhere, uh, or at night, and I will overthink the hell out of anything. Like I drive my family mad, and they know me. They know how I am, and uh, they're like, "Stop overthinking. It's fine. Just leave it." I'm like, "Is this why that didn't work? Uh, <laughs> should I have done this differently? 
or uh, uh, did i say no to a good film this is the synopsis of the film what do you think of it i already said no but i don't know if i now i'm like regretting it do you think i should call them back <laughs> this <laughs> this drama is never ending okay i'll tell you my perspective on what you just said okay and right. this is based on the fact that i'm a mumbai boy you grow up with multiple cultures mm-hmm. and one common thing you experience in mumbai when you're growing up here is dissection of cultures right so you'll have a gujarati family talking about tamil people and punjabi <laughs> people and bengali people you'll have the bengalis doing the same thing with yeah. like other communities yeah. You know the stereotype about Malayalis is what that y'all are very smart. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the oh huh. must be good at maths, <laughs> must be smart. And then all my Malu friends also generally, I can always go ten layers deep in conversation with them. Always. Right. Why are Malayalis so smart? Like, where does the stereotype come from? I, I mean, I think there's a, there's definitely a perception because of our literacy rates. You know, a lot of the times because uh, we have hundred percent literacy in our state. Uh, so i think education is always something that that is almost guarantee that you have to do and i think we really flourish but a lot of the times i have noticed we flourish outside the state uh, i have noticed that like whether it's the middle east uh, so if you look at all of our the best content writers and editors they'll be malayalis all all your publications in india uh, or all of all of the nurses everywhere will be malayalis uh, so I, i don't know maybe also maybe because of the size of the state you know it's everyone kind of knows everyone and like these things these values are maybe instilled and they just spread i don't i, I can't really pinpoint it when you're talking in malayalam with each other is the conversation just intellectual no it can be anything it can be anything oh my god there's so, <laughs> so much of movies and movie dialogue references and all that stuff like so is we really trip on uh you know the the all of the pop culture references of the 90s from all of our cinema so okay. uh, it is it is almost part of a like daily parlance like everybody everybody get, get, knows the reference point uh, it's kind of made it into the language now okay yeah tell me more what what do mallu talk about to each other is it offensive if i not at all not part? at all no uh, i mean some some find it offensive but i'm like it's okay sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> no 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 uh, but i i realize that you know whenever we do catch up You you meet a Malayali for the first time. The first thing we both look at each other and say, "Where are you from? Back home?" Like we say, "Not loved here." You know. Uh, now it's almost become a joke. You okay. know. As soon as you say that, we almost say the joke, "Hey, not loved here," because hey, that's the, yeah, yeah, because you. no, that's like that's the uh, we know that's the next question coming. As soon as oh, you Malayali, Malayali, okay. Then where are you from? Back home. Uh, that's a typical like icebreaker starter. Uh, but generally, I feel like movies are always discussed uh, or something about uh, the state, maybe or like, and also. like it's not like kerala is one big city right it's 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 one big like uh, it's it's all these towns uh, that are almost along this great road from north to south and each of us have a different dialect each of us have a different accent each of us have uh, a different way of maybe preparing similar dishes uh, so there are things that we are discovering about each other or uh, like when, when it's not like two people from kerala speak the same kind of malayalam Uh, so the, it's lovely in that sense like there is stuff to discover and learn and and uh, enjoy about each other you know like sports. i like the way he speaks ah. sports of course yeah what we, sport i think football is huge okay uh, in cricket in kerala cricket i'm saying kerala uh, i i would even go as far as to say like i think it's bigger than cricket in kerala yeah, yeah. just especially about- like malabar like north kerala sevens football is huge But uh, what football is followed like is it uh, local football is it international it's international everything like uh, during the world cup it's like they thanked all the all the countries and kerala <laughs> like i think they thought kerala is a country right? because so much love came from there so much of those videos really spread uh, you know it's a lot of epl um yeah epl uh, i think they just watch everything now now i'm saying like when now locally they play sevens football uh, and they have uh, local uh, tournaments and stuff uh, and to the point that they bring in players from africa and all that within their own little budgets like you know their clubs they pool in money uh, they'll get in players from elsewhere and and it's a, it's a, it's a, it, so i wasn't i didn't grow up around that you know so when i was shooting in north kerala it was insane it was like <laughs> every house was painted uh, you know there's uh, uh, my kids are playing everywhere but like 
they're all wearing the jerseys or like what you could just see the town taking whichever color of whichever uh, you know side they're supporting it's amazing yeah. yeah what should the rest of india know about kerala like what what do you think is some misconception that people have um or something you'd like to change the perception of what is a misconception not everyone's good at maths <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sure i'm sure there's many of us will agree that you know we're probably bad at math uh but i think i think there's my favorite things about kerala also because I always kind of looked at it with a nostalgic eye because I moved away when I was seven, okay. and it was uh, it was always uh, Kerala is where I'd go for my summer vacations and uh, where my mum and dad would live. Both both my grandparents lived in two different parts of the state, uh, not very far far apart. But even their cultures were different. So even if it's the same dishes, if 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 with seafood, like the prawns in my mum's house uh, would be cooked differently. And my dad's house be cooked differently. There's crazy food in There's Kerala. There's crazy food I will, in Kerala. I will vouch so for like this. So like you like Goan food, you like Sri Lankan food. Kerala is right in the middle. Yeah. Some of the best uh, food I've had in the country. Some of the best, yeah. So I, I, that is something that, I mean, I don't know if it's a misconception or people don't know about it. But you know, if you go there, there is so much to discover food-wise. And you can go all around the state. Uh, my mouth's watering talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> and What's your I, favorite Malayali dish? I definitely think... Uh, So my my uh side of my part of like kochi and stuff has a lot of uh how do I explain it like you have to kind of see you you, you know like hoppers and string hoppers yeah, and yeah. stuff it's like that yeah it's like, like appam so, appam and all you know and yeah. then we have something called patri patri is almost like a rice chapati very okay. thin uh you literally can eat like 2 3 at a time Got and then like coconut milk is a big part of our yeah. our uh, meals and some great non veg curries you know yeah. either mutton or chicken or prawns or whatever The, the, and my house is a feast and my mother strongly believes that anything she feeds me uh, i can't put on weight it can't affect my fitness <laughs> so every time i come back home after a long break or scared or whatever it is like this massive feast and she's like i've made all your favorites i'm like ma <laughs> when i act around diet i'll show my face now uh, she's like no no i made it you won't get fat don't worry i didn't put oil on it it's fine <laughs> but uh, yeah the food is insane as in my friends I've always had this doubt like dude how do you people in your house like how do you guys stay thin it, it makes no sense yeah i second that <laughs> thought i've been to kochi seen those chinese fishing nets oh my god yeah isn't it beautiful it's, it's like gorgeous. and it's so unique to the you get the whole god zone country vibe only when you actually visit this is not a kerala tourism uh, place <laughs> to <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking <laughs> we forgot in the mics are there no but is i mean you want to go up to the hills you know you go to munar or like the backwaters and the beach and everything is there it's so i think we all are also quite aware uh, of how blessed we are you're a very calm guy dude i'm someone who's diagnosed with adhd so i have intrusive thoughts oh, really? sometimes when i'm doing a podcast with people i visualize a train coming and running both of us over and all so <laughs> <laughs> that's the curse of my head, which is why all these random questions are being thrown at me wow you. okay but i mean I, i've i think um, experienced that once or twice it's like what you're sitting around you randomly like i think when i was promoting like the yesterday i i, I told this to other she was sitting next to me as rather do you because i mean there's four of us talking so uh, if you're not being asked a question when you're sitting there sometimes you drift off right okay. so i'm sitting thinking i'm like what would it be like if i just like keeled over and collapsed <laughs> like now or like or suddenly like i threw up or something would that be really weird <laughs> okay so after the thing so i'm looking at others like others do you get these kind of thoughts and he literally turned to me thinking it's something very relatable that i'm going to ask him he's like no bro that's all you <laughs> <laughs> like that's all you none of us get thoughts like so, this so so even you have intrusive thoughts i don't think when i'm sitting there like randomly like maybe i'm i'm entertaining myself you know like i'm thinking of situations which would just be bizarre or absurd i guess as artists we get to be kids for the rest of our lives in a way yeah. so it keeps your brain also kind of like a kid's brain i think so and i mean there's there's fun in that right like yeah. i i think that's why the ladies also love you cuz your inner child is very alive dude maybe maybe why, why do you think like you're such a big i've asked you this already But genuinely, why do you think you have such a big female fan following, other than the romantic films and the calm demeanor? See, I I think this whole major female fan for fan following discussions been happening maybe post Rocky Kanmani or or now Sita Ramu and stuff. But otherwise, I have a solid like boy fan following in Kerala. Like the the the, the boys will take it very personally. You keep saying sorry, sorry, bro. <laughs> sorry, because Macha. they are the ones you know who. uh are there and like in every which way like they 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 create the big posters and they uh, are out there watching all the films and 
they will come uh, and wait for me outside my house or like if i if i'm out for a drive they like you know for like dry, riding alongside me and stuff so there is there is a crazy connect yeah. with them also but uh, having said that I, i think there is people probably know that i'm i am who i am like this is who, this is how i am actually uh, so i think in that there's a connect you know i'm not some i don't think they see me as some uh, untouchable some crazy unattributed like i'm sitting in some mountain okay. uh, i feel like you, when i'm on screen i think the connect to the audience is that they feel like they can touch me okay you know people, i think that i think that's it because i've I'm, i've always been real i think people are very um aware that you're married yeah but do you, have you still had any weird fan interaction where i say a lot of the times they they kind of see us as a unit it's very sweet like they'll I had weird interactions with like slightly maybe older uh, you know uh, not aunties but like women okay. uh, who if I'm just taking a picture they like sneak a, a peck on my cheek or so <laughs> <laughs> like the really cool fashionable one and I'm like hmm not <laughs> not very appropriate but whatever well, but it's sweet like you know it comes i think from a lot of uh, how, how how do you feel when someone just lands up peck on your cheek sometimes it catches you by surprise right you're just like <laughs> and you're just posing for a picture so Anyone's i'm not even looking there i'm i'm posing for this picture tuck it happens anyone's grabbed your ass or anything yes again a, a, an older uh, lady i don't know why uh, and it was it was very awkward very bizarre yeah like she was i was in pain and it wasn't it wasn't like that kind of a grab i don't know what and she was like way older right she dug her fingers and yeah like it's like this and i don't know what it meant <laughs> <laughs> and we're on stage and there's like a lot of people and we're all standing there and I, i was like oh auntie please come and stand bro so i've held her I mean, a lot of the times people don't know where to keep their hands it's, you know yeah. like a lot of the times it's sometimes it's just on your behind but this i was like it was like that and i was like in the picture i'm trying to smile like ah like why is this happening like, and i don't know how to get out of it <laughs> <laughs> it was bizarre. Oh my god, I completely forgot about this. Yeah, I have been in some situations where hands are placed in wrong places. Isn't it? And you don't know how to react. Like in pictures, right? Your like... your body almost freezes. I can't change my expression now for this photo you're taking. So why and and the person who will be taking the photo will also take that little extra 3 seconds. So the ass is I mean the hand is nicely placed on your ass for some time. And you don't understand why? There's so much of your back. Yeah? Yeah. Well, what is the why? I I wait a minute I I know do it to some friends of mine just as a joke <laughs> I be like eh <laughs> so I'm like this is what I go through and like what are you doing like imagine this now explain to me why people do this but there's no answer I don't know what it is I think when brotherhood crosses a certain threshold <laughs> the lines of heterosexuality get a little get blurred. blurred yeah uh, I, bros relate bros relate bros relate fully um hmm I think you are being pretty sexualized I I think I'm only these one or two incidents but yeah. I can't imagine what famous women go through but yeah. all the famous men I know and I'm even talking about like Instagram creators and everything everyone has had some kind of a sexualizing experience I don't know why possibly but yeah this is I think something I can remember max like this this the pain that I felt I was like what is going on <laughs> do you think people like the fact that you're married or do you think it pisses people off I don't I don't I honestly I don't think people are that invested you know they don't okay. they don't like oh like I, I mean see even when your favorite actress or like you know someone you find really attractive or hot or something gets married like what what is upsetting you like what did you think you had a chance no you don't have a chance like it's not going to happen you know you're not going to meet this person uh but I think people just like to say this like and, and it's sweet like you know they enjoy uh like sometimes like I'll, I'll be watching like a uh, like a, a youtube review or something uh i want to listen it hmm it's too much romance in this hmm i don't <laughs> like how how he's getting so close to that book and i'm like what <laughs> like, but it is sweet i think i think i think people enjoy that right? like way you feel like this person belongs to you in some way uh and that is also there there is there is ownership a lot of the times uh, viewers have a certain ownership which is why sometimes they get upset you know if uh, like they want a picture and and um, you know you feel like you're looking like uh, a mess or something you're like so not not and then but why why can't you take a picture because suddenly you do belong to them in some way you know as actors or uh, I, i think there is a sort of sense of weird ownership that people have and i think all this comes from that okay fair yeah how old were you when you got married 28 
Was it 28? Yeah, 28. Right age for a guy? Uh, weirdly, all the men in my family have somewhere been around there. And it was good. I mean, I I, I wish I'd maybe uh, been working a, a little before uh, for some time. You know, just kind of earning for myself and doing things on a whim. You know, going on a solo trip or things like that, which I can't do now. Um, or I'll think a hundred times because my time's so limited. Uh, I'm always like, you know, I should try and, you know, do the holiday with... with with uh, my wife and daughter because they don't get time with me and so some of those things i i wish i'd done maybe uh, if i had that kind of money to spend you know uh, go to some concert in europe or something like you know that three day four day thing just go for a thing and come back but your girl was with you throughout your rise then that's the flip side yeah i guess i guess that's a dream for a lot of dudes just saying <laughs> every every guy dreams of marrying the girl who's with him when he's a nobody True. and then True. with him at the top as well no no absolutely yeah yeah sorry i i didn't i didn't get what you're saying initially but she did see me when i was when i had no no clue i just told her like when i when we met i was like uh, uh i want to at least act in one film and direct one film these two things are like my bucket list even if it's one film i want to act just know like if i can and i want to direct because i want to create something i want to tell something uh, that's all i know and i don't think she fully understood any of this like uh, her family has zero exposure to the industry or even a lot of regional cinema uh, they like urdu speaking so they probably know more of hindi cinema than regional cinema um but she's seen this every day you know and even when it's been growing even when it's been bad days uh, and she's seen all of it and i think i think she balances me in that sense it answers my question about why you're so happy bro <laughs> <laughs> little bit little no but you know you need that grounding i think uh, so if ever i act a little bratty you know she has the sort of freedom to tell me that you no know, i understand like you know things are going well and you're now the star but you know <laughs> come down that's the blessing that's the blessing and I, I, the same school friends have that you know with me like they'll never treat me there's no uh, separate lane for me there's no there's nothing there's no extra privilege they, there's they don't even look they don't even look at me with a different lens we still have the same conversations the same we joke about the same things or uh, you know when we get together it's none of us are really even talking shop not, not, nobody is discussing work and i love that i'm not trying to be intrusive with you at all so if you feel like not answering don't bro but i would actually like to know about your marriage just from a brotherly perspective because it's a phase i know i'm going to be heading into right. myself so i want to know how your marriage evolved because i believe it was an arranged marriage ish that, that's what wikipedia says <laughs> so <laughs> no, so i've told this marriage story a lot um, but i mean we were both from the same school she was 5 6 years my junior and uh, uh, around this 26 27 i wasn't seeing anyone at that time uh, and I started getting these rishtas and stuff. My mom was kind of like, you know, maybe it's time for you to settle down. I'm getting these rishtas. Do you want to explore? And I said, I don't know if I like that process. Uh, and randomly, I started bumping into my wife, who I've never seen out in Chennai till then, ever. Like, she's not very social. I just never. I was like, where, where, I was like, where do these kids hang out? I've never seen them. But a lot of people kept telling me about her. They're like, you know, remember those, uh, you know, uh, a mile from school, your junior, and you know, why aren't you? both meeting like we think there's is definitely something there like it, it could be a possible um chemistry pair, chemistry or whatever um so when i started seeing her out and uh, i think i saw her out three times in a week and i have this weird thing with three you know uh, sometimes there are movies that come to me and uh, i say no to it and then it comes back and again i say no to it and if it comes back like some 3 4 times like that i'm like maybe there's something i'm not seeing maybe these people are seeing me in it maybe i should do it so i was like okay i have never seen her out and suddenly i'm seeing her out so often uh maybe it's a sign maybe i should reach out so i very 2000s uh you know that era facebook messages saying hi <laughs> you know i don't know if you remember me from school and uh i am getting all these rishtas and i think i'm sure you're also going through that in your house and if you're not seeing anyone or whatever and if you want to just grab a cup of coffee let's at least see if we get along and 
if it's terrible you know you would have just met a senior from school for coffee and that's it uh so she didn't reply for a couple of days and I was like uh <laughs> like did I, did I do something wrong did I cross the line with somebody I don't know and which is very sweet she, she replied and she's like no yeah no I, I'd be open for it uh sure let's meet sort of thing uh so I guess we both kind of kept the parents in, in the loop being like you know we're going to meet uh, and then see if there's something there sort of thing how did you know that this girl is your wife i don't know i don't know i think up until then anyone i dated or i met or knew i could see them maybe uh with my friends or uh, when we were all hanging out or socialize or whatever i never saw any of them at home like in, i couldn't visualize some like cuz i would always think of my family my extended family everything because we're so close knit and there's so much of uh that bonding that we have and somehow like when i saw her as like i just see her there something you can't like articulate it exactly i can't articulate it. I, right. i i just feel like i could see her as a part of my world as a part of my family okay. which i'd never seen with anybody else and how does the relationship evolve over time like the longest i've dated someone is like 3 and a half 4 years so i don't yeah yeah but then the same uh cross she was very young when we got married she was only like 23 or something um so she's grown up over time and uh it evolves in the sense see also it was it was a my 30s was essentially me having met someone uh, me having taken this giant leap into this career and then trying to make that um and kind of find each other and literally i came back from my honeymoon and i went straight to shoot my second film started and they waited only for my wedding to get done so we barely had a courtship uh, we met and we were married 6 months later um and there's only so much i think our families allowed us to really um travel or suddenly we could take some holiday together and stuff so it was very uh meeting for coffee or going for a movie or things like that so we got married and instantly like that's when you know we would have the freedom to do anything we want but that's exactly when i started my career so in that sense uh you know every little chance we got to hang together or spend time together or it meant a lot and i think we made the most of it so it's always been like long distance uh my, my entire marriage i think uh and that that works both ways isn't it takes effort but you also start to like value the little things right even if you're just home and chilling with a movie playing or doing nothing would you value that you know i don't get to do it because i'm always living out of a suitcase and i'm in some hotel somewhere uh so i don't know what <laughs> what we'd be like if I had some 9 to 5 job and I was always at home maybe you know I would have driven her insane but I think because I'm always coming and going <laughs> you know they say that every successful relationship contains one normal person and one crazy person is that I, true I'm the crazy in this really yeah I think so because you're such a good boy like so imagine her you know like I mean, I, said, I I still like to go out a lot I love people around and um uh, I'm not like you know the general crowds or anything but like my same friends left to me I would want them around all the time <laughs> you know I always want to go out with them I always want them coming home I want my house to be full of people and uh, she's not that like it's not like she's anti social but like she likes to turn in early uh, there's a thing you know like there's uh, there'll be one person who uh, sleeps at 10 and one person who steps out at 10 and then they get married so <laughs> we were like that, that. average is out <laughs> <laughs> if you could go back and tell that 28 year old version of yourself something about relationships or about marriage what would you tell that 28 year old version it's not just the wedding right a lot of people when they say i i want to get married I, i'm looking to settle down are always thinking of just the wedding like it's like it's in the movies you know it's wedding end of movie happily ever after and uh, but what marriage is is definitely companionship uh is definitely you know having that one per- you know there's there's a a line of film have, have you seen shall we dance no 
What's that film? It's a good film. Okay. So she, there's, Susan Sarandon says this line where she's like, we, do you know why we can get married or we have a partner? Uh, is, so, there is someone with you to witness your every days. Like, every little thing that happens in your day. It shouldn't go unnoticed. Someone should witness it. It can be something as silly as, what did you eat for lunch? Uh, or I sprained my toe today. I stubbed my toe today. Or something. The the most trivial of things that happen to you. You're not sharing that every day with your parents or your kids or anything. But I think whoever is your uh, partner on this ride called life is the only witness to to your every day. You cried in front of your wife. Yeah, how many times? Like I. The big moments, right? Like the big, like whenever, I, I get emotional every time a film exceeds my expectation. Uh, Why, bro? I don't know. I think because I put in so much and maybe I had so much self-doubt, you know, if I'll make it as an actor uh, or if I'll make it as a, there's always some, Something that you can't attain. Somebody will say, you, but you don't have this. But you don't have that. You don't have some 100 crore film. You don't have some 50 crore film. Something, you know. Uh, it's not like I chase numbers. But uh, you're, you're, you're talking about a human occurrence, dude. It's then no, no, still throughout life. No, so I'm saying, so my point, I don't even understand why I get emotional. But like, so, and you hear a script and you, you see a film in your head. A lot of the times, filmmakers don't see the same film. That's where there's a mismatch. Like sometimes people are like, why did you choose this film? And I'm like, I saw it differently in my head. Maybe he saw it differently. And sometimes it matches. And that's a great thing. But sometimes it goes beyond that. That I find like... Destiny was at play. I don't know. I'm like, it's, it's so overwhelming for me. I'm like, oh my God, I only dreamt this much for this film. I thought it would be this great. But it is that great. Freaking <laughs> God. You know? So great. those those moments for me, on that release day when I see this joy and stuff, like I've broken down. Out of joy, just like a happy something. But you feel like you need to like let it out. Ever out of sadness? No, it wasn't out of... I mean, sadness obviously like if there's, if there's some loss in the family or something like that. But not not for anything else. Uh, but usually it's these things like when I got my first state award. You know, like... I, and it's not like some happy tear thing. But it's like I literally like break down. Uh, which I think it's good. I mean, I think it's healthy. Like it should come out. Uh, but she's witnessed all of that. You're a blessed guy. Yeah, I I do feel blessed when that happens. A lot of the people who sit in that seat in front of me are very blessed. And there's some people who are just holding that extra 10% of blessings. And I say this very, like, genuinely, man. I'm not just saying that. Thank you. Like, you can tell a blessed person when you hear them speak and when you hear about their life. And how humble they still are despite the success. Like, you know, you're constantly crediting it to not yourself. Uh, there is still self-doubt, which, you know. Sometimes a small amount of but that is... But you need is... it, no? Like, um, just to push yourself more. Like, I don't know if I if I was supremely confident. I mean, I'm always a little jealous of people who are so confident. Uh, but I think I think it's my self-doubt or like uh, fear of not doing justice to a role or a film. That stuff drives me a lot. What I feel respect towards you for is this whole family angle. In just the world of glamour, I don't think the family angle is celebrated as much as you seem to be celebrating it. As in what I've gotten to know about right. you, the guy in you. Like I always knew about the brand DQ, but right. I, I'm, when I'm talking to you, I see how much it's in your heart. And that's what I also really aspire to have in life, honestly, man. So when you see an older guy who's had a flourishing career and values like family life and is a good dad, good husband... Uh, I think those are goals for a lot of guys who are entering the thirties. Yeah. So <clears throat> thank you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> You're most welcome, brother. Uh, but I mean, it, it's interesting because I um, like when when you're speaking to me with that perspective, where uh, it's almost like brotherly advice I'm giving. I never thought I would ever do that, so that's great. You never thought you'd do what? As in, be in a place to give a younger brother advice. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I was always the younger kid. I was an elder sibling. Uh, so I never thought like, I would, like I know there are uh, friends of mine or younger friends of mine who who do seek 
my thoughts or my advice on things or uh, see me as a mentor and i've not fully understood it i'm like i am only still figuring things out i'm 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 still learning uh, i don't know if i have it in me to mentor anybody but maybe there is a uh, perspective of me that i'm not seeing uh, but it it is it is a nice feeling so yeah the, thank the you for that the perspective is that i feel 80s born mm-hmm. guys especially mostly only chase kariyo right 90s born guys mostly only chase kariyo even more <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice to see an 80s born guy balance out his life because i see a lot of my 80s born brothers with troubled personal lives and all mm-hmm. and you know you're a very stable dude and it reflects on your face so and i mean like also through conversation and all that but this is goals dude like i think when i was 22 my goals were to have a stable career that's it 25 it's about money and like yeah. magnanimity and now when i'm 30 it's about what you have stable family life i mean with all the uh, money you earned i think it's it's great initially right you you buy all the things you thought you couldn't buy but i feel like beyond a point you're only buying multiples of the same thing right you have one car you have three you have one house you have two you have one watch you have 10 watches so i, I think the, the best way to spend your money is on experiences on travel and and all of that and i think once but as 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 i mean speaking for boys because we're boys and we can understand i think it is important for us to prove this to ourselves that hey i made it hey i i i made this money that i was chasing or whatever and i i bought these things that i wanted to buy and once you get there and you're fine you're done you know and i see this in my dad i see these in um, senior actors after a point they're done buying they're like it's okay no no i don't care i know i can so it's fine so i think we're almost at uh, the end of this episode this man. has been fun it's been uh, uh, i mean I, I, you've got me to think and uh, even like kind of look back on on my life a lot which is great yeah i think people watch these pieces with famous humans to read between the lines they're studying your silences they're right. studying where you hesitate with an answer etc that's where you get to actually see the person's character yeah that's what people connect with now the raw form of uh, whoever sitting in that seat man right uh, and how's it been for you i mean it's it's different from anything else i think okay. um it's easy to connect with you uh, like you like i said like you said i mean i i like your vibe i like your energy um and I always thought I was a good listener but you're clearly a very good listener. <laughs> <laughs> you know why I'm a good listener? Because this show started 4 years ago and right before that I had a bad breakup. Right. And one of the reasons she gave me is and you're not even a good listener. <laughs> so I was like really I'm going to turn it into a career. <laughs> so so now she can never say that again. Uh yeah, all I'll say is here we are. Uh man DQ brother thank Sir. you. Thank I you. really appreciate you. Uh I have a strong gut feeling this is not the last time we'll ever have a conversation. Awesome. So, I look forward to it. Yeah, I and, f- I and I hope it's in uh different intervals where you know like like maybe I'm going into another decade or you're going and we have a little more experience yeah. to discuss. We actually had scheduled you for tomorrow again. No, 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 I'm <laughs> messing around, bro. I'm messing around. Going to let you grow along your organic path. uh gonna let you accumulate all those experiences keep evolving you're a very evolving oriented human and that's not something i take for granted because uh again it's not easy to live the kind of life you're living mm-hmm. but on the surface it looks like it is pretty easy for you and that says a lot about your character man right. so i appreciate you i'm glad i met you that positive energy is <laughs> out of i just wish you all the best brother thank you so much uh, thank you I will leave it to the universe and all the energies <laughs> to make this happen again. Thank you, Ranvi. Thank you. Awesome. Appreciate Thank it. you. That was the episode for today, ladies and gentlemen. If you're a long-time listener of TRS, tell me what you thought of this particular episode. I love doing really chilled out conversations like this once in a while. If you're a new listener of the show, make sure you check out our entire library of all our film-oriented podcasts. We'll link them down below. Keep supporting TRS. Ranveer and the team will be back very soon. Mm-hmm.